Hey guys, this is Barrett Sultano. I am bringing you with our model Nicole, the Chignon break, Bouquet Breakdown is what we're gonna call it today. We're gonna use some techniques of the traditional chignon of a lot of folding, a little bit of twisting, and we're gonna go through that as we do the entire up style right now. So you can see right now, I'm just taking a one and a half inch curling iron, and we're going through the front part of Nicole's hair. And I like to start in the front when I'm doing a set, especially on someone who has a little bit of a thinner, straighter formation for their hair just because you let that set, you let the curl sit in there a little bit longer to let the curl formation happen. And as we go through, you're gonna see that I'm using two different irons. I'm using a one and a half and a one inch curling iron. I like to do two different kinds of curling irons with a straighter formation of hair, only because it gives a little bit more texture. One curls a little bit wavier, one curls a little bit more curled. But as I said, we're letting these curls right now sit and cool down so that when we go to do the up style, those are the, those are the first ones that we take down, but they've also had the longest to set in the curl. Same thing, horizontal sectionings. I like to take a one to one and a half inch sectioning. You don't want to go too big with your sections. You want to make sure that you're actually getting the curl complete around that iron. And if not the entire section, if you have those little baby fine hairs in the front, go through and just put a little bend in them because you are going to get, gonna get those up in the style as you go through. And you can also see that when I'm going through and clipping them, I really like to stay pretty uniform and pretty organized as I'm going up. That's why I'm doing the horizontal sectioning, going with the round of her head. But I'm always using the pin curl clip and putting them on the right-handed side. I am right-handed. So if you're left-handed, you can really put them on either side. I would just recommend always keeping them on the same side because then when you go to take them out of the set, when you go to do the style itself, it doesn't disturb the curl too much. It doesn't rip apart the curl as you're taking it down. And also while you're doing a set, this is something I probably wouldn't do maybe on every client that comes into the salon looking for a formal style, prom style, bridal style. When I do do brides, I always like to do a set on them because they are, you know, it's one of the most important days of their lives, as they all like to say. They really want to make sure that all those pictures, every, all the pictures that they get from their photographers, from their friends, that the style looks the same all day long. So if someone were coming in just for a night out on the town, you wouldn't necessarily have to do a complete set on them if their hair holds a curl pretty well. Like I said before, if they don't hold a curl, I would go through and do maybe a quicker set or at least to add a little bit of bend into their hair and let the curl cool off. So now the back sectioning bring them from the nape all the way up to the crown, horizontal sectionings, changing every other row with the one inch to the one and a half inch. As we get to the top, I really like to split that. I like to use the bigger curling iron as we get to the top sections that's more than likely where you're going to add a little bit more volume if you are going to add the volume to the up style. And then setting those up, letting them curl down, cool down, excuse me. And as we take the set down, I always like to start with the first curl that I pinned up on the sides. Sometimes you can, you can leave the sides up if they do want some pieces down maybe in the front. Their fringe area is a little too short. You can leave those pieces up as you're doing the back of the up style. I always like to start at the back of the up style, really get a formation of where we're going with that style to see if they like it, where they want the front to live after that. Complete back is done is a little bit easier, I find, because you already have the style behind it. So right now we're just going to do the base and you can see that I just twisted it around my hand and we're going to let it fold into the rest of the hair because this is the base we're probably going to use a few more bobby pins than I would on every other piece. I like to make sure that the bobby pins are crisscrossed into an X because that really helps them lock in and make sure that it's nice and secure because you are going to be pinning the rest of the hair onto this base right now. Chopstick's really one of the things that 
I use a lot when it comes in upside and you're gonna see me using it to fold the hair into other pieces of the hair. You're gonna see me using it to section the hair away. And you're also gonna see me using it just to fold in the, the edges of the hair as well. One reason why I really chose to call this a chignon bouquet breakdown, um, a chignon traditionally is a lot of folding, making sure the hair is layered on top of each other. So this is more of a untraditional style of chignon. There's a ton of different ways that you can do a very traditional chignon. This is just taking the technique from the tradition and kind of updating it a little bit, using a little bit more folding, a little bit more sectioning in it. Taking something really classic and putting your own twist on it is a great way to come up with a new formal style for someone who comes in saying, you know what, I think I just want a chignon, I think I want a French twist, something like that. Take that, those techniques. Just like if you're watching this video, you're gonna take the techniques. You don't necessarily have to take the entire style. Just take the techniques that I'm showing you with the twisting, with the folding, and you know, the way that I'm spraying, the way that I'm using my combs, that my hands. You don't have to take everything from this. Take one technique and use it in your styling and it can completely change the way that maybe you would go about something. It can give it a, a new spin on it, which is what we're doing with the chignon, just taking the technique of the folding and putting a new spin on it. And you're gonna see that I use a lot of bobby pins but I don't ever open them with my mouth. That is a huge no-no in my book. I feel that if a client sees you open a bobby pin with your teeth or your mouth, then they're gonna wonder, okay, now she's gonna go put that in my hair. So I would say just using, you don't have to open the bobby pin completely, but if you just pinch it open with your fingertips and then slide it up and then back down, you're gonna see, you've seen me do that quite a bit with each section go up and down with the bobby pin or even the hairpin, it really slides in nicely and hides the bobby pin because you never really want to see those bobby pin ends sticking out in a formal style. And you always want to make sure that you're using the same colored bobby pins as your client's hair. If you have a blonde client, make sure you're not using the black bobby pins. There we go with the sliding up, sliding back down, kind of tweaking those little tails right there. Using a lighter spray as we're going through, you don't want to use a really firm spray as you're putting the style together, as you're folding the hair in together, only because then if you need to move a piece of hair, it's going to be a little bit harder to move. I wouldn't use the firmer spray until the very ends of it. So I'm mean, just using a light working spray, but always spraying in the direction that the hair is living, that the cuticle is growing into because if you spray opposite of the cuticle, then you're gonna fray out those ends a little bit more and nobody wants to have a little bit of frizz when it comes to a formal style, especially a bride, prom, anybody. So always spraying in the direction that that hair is living. A really important question to always ask your client too, it may seem really simple, and that you wouldn't think would bother a lot of people is, do you want your ears covered? Do you want the tops of it, the hair laying on it? Do you want it behind it? I've, uh, I've found through the years that a lot of people say, oh, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't, don't actually think I want my ears shown. I think I want the hair to live a little bit over it. So that's one thing as you're getting to the front sections of this style that you wanna make sure that you ask somebody, do you want it on that or do you not? And it could be just a simple yes or no. It couldn't. It maybe doesn't bother them at all. But it's something that maybe they didn't even think about. And you want to make sure that they're really happy with the entire style and especially the front of it because that's what they're seeing. That's where you can tweak it a little bit. If you see that they're getting a little uncomfortable, you can kind of tell their body language and seeing, oh, is she smiling? Is she not? See where that. See uh, how that client wants to wear the front of their hair. And again, with just folding that hair over, you're gonna see it, that section has a nice little sleekness to it instead of the twists and the folds into it. I really like to make sure that it's nice and cohesive. The front of this style is gonna be a little bit more sleek, a little bit more subdued. So I wanna make sure that 
the back of the hair ties into the front of the hair. And you can make a cohesive style, even though it's a little bit more to one side, you can still make sure that it's even. You can make sure that the volume's even all the way around, that you have the sleekness on one side that you have on the other side, as well as in the back. Going through, taking our last section on the side, and this is her heavy side, so this is where the fringe is gonna live. Again, spraying backwards. Doing a little fold right there, a little twist, but always stepping in front. Use your mirror as a stylist. Step in front of that client to see if that piece of hair is gonna look right from the front. It may look right from the back and where you're placing it, but sometimes if you step in front of them, it has a whole different look. There we go, just opening that bobby pin with the tips of my finger, folding the hair around each other, stepping in front, seeing where I want those ends to live. Again, just making sure that you're spraying in the direction that that hair is going, using the tail comb to get those little fine hairs above the ear, especially on this heavy side, you wanna get the lower section above the ear if you're gonna let the rest of it live on top of the ear. And you can see I kind of changed my body position as well. I went in and moved more to the front of her hair as I'm doing the heavy section. So I can see where those hairs are gonna live and where I'm gonna fold them into the base of the style. I think using hairpins is really important when it comes to upstyling, especially when you're doing the front of the hair or doing the tops of it, because that's those are the parts that the client's gonna see. They're not gonna see the base underneath everything, because we folded everything and layered everything on top of each other. So you really wanna make sure that those pieces are nice and slick, but using the hairpin to put it in place and then see if you like where it is, stepping in front of it, as you've seen me do it quite a few times during the video and then going back in and putting a bobby pin in it or maybe putting another hairpin in there. We're getting to the fringe section of her hair. Again, spraying in that direction. You see that a lot in this section. Lightly combing this hair. You don't wanna disturb the curl too much because then you're gonna brush the curl that you put in and worked so hard with the set. You're gonna brush it completely out if we go a little harsh with the brushing. Again, just folding that hair nicely into it. That's why kind of using this as a chignon bouquet breakdown. Like I said, we called it before. As I'm folding the hair into the style, you can kind of see it almost looks like little rosebuds. That's why we kind of use the bouquet word for it. And the folding section for the chignon. And if you have any little hairs out of place, you can take a step back at it and then see that it might need a, a bobby pin or a hair pin if it's a larger piece. Using the bobby pin for the larger pieces and the hairpins for those little fine pieces that you can just slide right into the rest of it. Fringe is really important, just use the tail comb or the end of my brush just to place that in there, nice and sleek. And there you have a nice formal style for our model Nicole, the Shin Yan Bouquet Breakdown.